Hello there. It's time to paint the beast. The uh, the Revell F14 Tomcat is fully primed, and in fact, I've got his little brother here. The um, it's just a little bit wet, but almost done as well. Just had to do a few touch-ups. That's the 148 scale Tamiya Little Ice Man. So I'm going to paint these two together, and what we're going to do first is explain. Well, I've used a sort of a blacky browny base here. Um, for the 132, um, this is Steinle Res. It's gone down okay. It's a little bit, um, a little bit rough in a few little places. I'll just give it a quick um, sand back just to just to get there. And I'm looking at all the rivets that I've done, and they're quite petite, but they are showing up. And I'm pretty happy with how um, how it's come together. There is one fault though I need to fix, and I'll just do that off camera before we go any further. And that's just the canopy line there. I had to basically fill the entire thing. There, so I'll just get a scribing tool out and just quickly scribe in some panel lines there. Uh, <laughs> that was a beast of a thing compared to the, the Tamiya one literally just dropped in click like that if you watched the last video. So, what's the process I'm going to use? I'll just describe the process first and maybe I should have got all the paints out to show you so um, to get ready. So let's, let me do that first. So what I'm going to do first is over this black brown base I'm going to mottle on, mottle using one of these um, funky little stencils. I'm just going to model on some grey just to because obviously the whole thing is grey but we need to move to the various sort of colours that are on here and thankfully I don't have actually a lot of light gold grey left. The FS36375 I haven't got much left at all. Oops I might have to make up some more using my Tamiya blends but I've got some SMS dark ghost grey I might go down to the shops and get some more light. So SMS I can get locally from my local um, hobby store uh, actually Wargaming but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this Dove Grey I picked up <laughs> cheap. It was on special MRP. And it's almost a full bottle. It's grey-ish, grey-white-ish. And I'm just going to um, basically cover the entire surface with a, a model effect to, to bring this back up to sort of a grey sort of finish. And then we'll go over with the actual proper colours. But if you know Top Gun, you know um, that a lot of this is actually darker than the light ghost grey. There's lots of touch-ups on Iceman's particular bird. The most famous one's not really a touch-up is the fact that this whole, with this panel or this panel, I can't remember, I think it's this one here, is actually in um, uh, the original Tamiya, uh, Tamiya, original Tomcat colour, which is, oh, I can't think of what it's called. It's, um, light gold grey I think yeah so it's a really whitish sort of one but a lot of these other ones are walkways the the, the back tennis deck as I call it here is really a very dark grey and there's lots of touch-ups just everywhere but to get to that point first we need to bring up um, this is why I start with a, a brown black sort of base you need to see that sort of really worn under base coat first and so I'll be doing this one and the Tamiya all at once so let's get stuck into it I'll do the scribing first um, there's a few little spots here, I don't know why, and also there's some penny hairs, there's always penny hairs when I prime, I primed about, you know, I won't tell you how many models I primed yesterday, but it was a lot, because I'm doing, I'm trying to do like 15 things at once here, so let's just get stuck into it. So, big skip ahead here on the big F14, so you can see I've put down a few modelling codes there, and I've started to do the edges over there. So how do I do this, and how do I do it so quickly? Well, for the main areas, we're just using these these masks here, I'm just using this sort of model and I'm just painting all over very quickly uh, to the big flat areas and then I switch it up and move to a smaller bit of area here and then when I need to go around the curves here, and I'll show you how to do this in a second, I've got a smaller stencil here and I'm able to, to sort of bend it around and get it down like that. So I'll fire this up, The um, I've got the Dove Grey here, this is a Swedish Army Dove Grey, it's a spare grey bottle that I've got, I think I've already told you that. So I'll get the camera in place, so let me get the airbrush. So as you can see, it's going down pretty quickly. You just change the pattern around occasionally. So what I like to do is do a few passes. Sometimes I even use this Luftwaffe model as well. And then once I've got about half the black covered, I'll come in here and I'll just do a freehand. And all I'm trying to do is just try to
as my compressor goes on. So all I'm trying to do here is to reduce down the black so you can see the difference between this panel here and this here. This is pretty much ready to go for the final misting coat. And this is just gives me all that variation that I like. So even though this looks like a tennis tennis court level, I still haven't even done the, the little Tamiya. <laughs> um, it doesn't take that long to do. But I'm going to put my mask on because this is all lacquer paint. So I'm getting nice and high. So I've got the big beast and the little beast all mottled up. And that look cool going over the top of that one. Um, so they're all mottled up in that dove grey. Almost used the entire bloody bottle on two of these things. Now it's time to put the real paint down. So let's have a talk about paint. Um, I've got a little printout here of um, Matthew Lawler. He did the um, he did the screen captures and showed you how to do. This is Modex 104. Um, excuse me, I've just had a, a, another a whiskey because I needed it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've been staying up late um, painting models. Um, where was I? Yes, okay, so we've done this. This is the first stage, the modeling stage. Uh, now we need to put down the paint. So these Tomcats basically had three color schemes. We'll use federal standards so you can get an understanding of what the colors are, and it's gray, gray, and gray. So you've got FS36375, 35237, and 36320. This is MRP and SMS, these are all uh, lacquers, which I really, really love. Uh, I inadvertently bought a second bottle of this, why not? <laughs> so what I'm gonna be doing is painting uh, over the model layer, basically a full layer of the 36375, which really is only on the bottom, but we need to develop a full gray and then go over the top because, as we'll sh I'll show you in this printout, and I might put a screen capture up, I'm just using this one, I don't have a color printer. Um, yeah, you can see that on the top side, a lot of dark gray is quite evident. So a lot of the top side is actually going to, look at my notes, is actually going to be the US Navy gray blue. Okay, so, and then the bottom is going to be, most of the bottom is going to be dark ghost gray. So there's actually not going to be a lot of light gray, but you need that underneath. So I think my camera's gone and had the shits. Okay, get back to me. Now, instead of using the MRP, which I haven't got much left of, I prefer to use this stuff for more fine things. And you can, as you can see, I've got an acre of, of Tomcat here to paint. I've mixed up my own sort of pseudo 36375, which is just Tamiya XF19, XF2. I'm trying to get through all my Tamiya paints. I've got so much Tamiya stuff. It's really good for doing this sort of undercoat stuff. Like with my P38, I mainly use Tamiya. So I've mixed up a batch, just lightened up the XF19 a little bit of white, and I'm going to paint this all over. I've got a new toy, came in the mail yesterday. I love these um, Krios PS. This is the 289 with a 0.3 needle. I normally use, uh, the other one I've got is a 0.18. I've been using that a lot lately, but this is the 0.3 should be a lot better for more coverage. I've also got that 0.5, so I've got the whole range now. Really love these, super easy to clean, so well you know, designed and just ergonomically just fit me really, really well. Nice big cup, because I'm gonna be doing a lot of painting. So let me set up, I'll move all the stuff out of the way and I'll show you what I mean by what we need to do with putting this layer up to what it looks like, almost, because this doesn't really look real right now, does it? Almost looks like a, a real, dirty but real aircraft. So I've put that first layer down of the um, 36375 using the Tamiya mix and if you're wondering yes I am diluting that quite a bit with the unicorn tears. Mr. Leveling Thinner are probably about 60 to 70 percent at least maybe even a bit more. The first batch that I've this first batch I made up was a little bit too thick so I've actually added more thinner in the airbrush to give you a better um, sort of um, what's the word I'm looking for? Comparison. <laughs> okay so that's the unmottled uh, mottled but not done um, one of the stabilators off the Tamiya 148 and that's what I've done uh, just then okay so you can still see quite a bit of variation in the underlying paint scheme still looks a little bit dirty so it does set up for a bit more randomness later on I prefer to do this instead of doing salt effects and other things I might do that for a future um, build but but this particular Iceman Top Gun build this method I think is the best way to approach uh, how to get the effects because what we're going to do after I've painted all of these in the full cover color of the 36375 I'll be getting into those MRP and SMS paints and doing panel by panel okay the correct colors you know the canopy the like for example on these one these wing glove parts one bits one color one's the other so and it's all going to be freehand I won't need to mask much because um I love these airbrushes so much you don't really need to mask stuff just do it freehand do it live okay let me get into this um 
I might just top up and we'll, I'll show you how to, I'll show you live how this works. Let's start and just paint this fella first. So I'm trying to keep some of the panel line shading that's still uh, when I did the initial model. Oh, compressor, Jesus. Hosing on there, slow it down Chris. Getting used to this new airbrush, the trigger action on it's a bit different to the 1.8, or maybe I've worn that one out, and this one's a bit stiff. Maybe you need a stiff drink. And that's a bit better. Okay, so we've still got a lot of variation in that. And this Tammy is going down nice and smooth, but I will give this a bit of a sand back when I'm finished. Because I always find flirm and dog hair in my paint. Doesn't matter where I paint, I'm not painting on the paint booth, obviously. I don't know if you can hear me over that bloody compressor. But um, yeah, I'm painting on my bench here because, uh, yeah, you can't I can't fit the big Tomcat in the paint booth, even though my paint booth is what, half a metre wide at least. And it's got a P38 in there at the moment. Yeah. That'll probably do. The secret with this is when you think, oh, I'll just give it one more pass, don't. Just leave it. Because when you do um, flat coats and, and other clear coats and that, it just disappears. For some reason, the modeling just, you know, a clear and it just, pfft. and then also if you're putting two colors next to each other, you can get what's called tonal crush, where, you know, you put a blue next to another blue and all of a sudden it just goes a dull gray. I don't know, that's how our brains are, how <laughs> they do this. So let me get onto this, um, the tennis court. That's the tennis court back there or back here, whatever you want to call it. I'll try not to paint over the things I've highlighted, just give it a bit more variation. And I'm trying to go for screen accuracy, but not 100%. We're going to do a little bit of artist uh, license because, you know, life's pretty boring. There's already enough boring models out there. Don't get me started. I'll get pilloried again for dare saying, oh my God, that if you put a model in a national competition, don't plonk it on a piece of paper. You know, make a base for it or something. Have some pride in your presentation, for God's sakes. Anyway, I must be, um, I don't know. These and other rants can be listened to at Becker's Models. So it continues the um, putting down of this stuff. Oh yeah, this is the Tamiya kit. In case you're wondering, there's Big Joe over there. So all I'm doing is just enough to cover most of that marbling mottling to leave some of it coming through. And I'm not applying this evenly, that's the point. You don't want to do it uneven, you want to build upon that unevenness and randomness. It's actually more planned randomness because I've got... I know where I'm actually going to be putting a lot of the effects, so... Just slowly build it up. This is why I like to make this nice and thin. There we go, it's still quite mottly. Is that a word? Now the underside on both of these, because it's the same plane, is going to be very, very dirty. So I'm going to actually leave a lot of the, um, the, the black showing through the mottle. I'm going to have quite a few layers of paint going down here. I think I need to get a new compressor. That one's getting starting to sound a bit janky. Had the same compressor for I don't know how many years. T 
10 years. So just a cheap Chinese one. Cost about 100 bucks 10 years ago. I think they're still over only 100 bucks now. All right, let me just keep going with this and uh, I'll come back to you when it's all done. As you can see, I've skipped ahead a fair bit here. I've had to do a lot of experimentation and I'm still not happy with it. But basically, I've put down the blue-gray, which is actually very blue. Um, yeah, I wasn't happy with how desaturated the MRP blue-gray was. So I went out to my local hobby shop and bought the SMS equivalent, which again is very desaturated and was barely showing up. Although it did show up somewhat on my... Um, on my paint mule here, where is it? Oh, I had painted over it, but it was still quite desaturated. That's the ghost grey. That's the the dark uh, ghost. Oh, sorry, that's the light ghost, dark ghost, and then underneath it, you can't see all some of it here. So that's how desaturated that is. And now all the photos. Um, I'll see if I can put a screen capture up. It's quite blue. The the top side of Iceman's bird. So I don't know. Um, here's the F14 where I've done a little bit of some some shading and so forth, but uh, where are some bits that are actually in that color? Yeah, that's, I mean, you can't, you can barely tell, maybe on the spine there. I mean, you know, that's the blue. The, look at the difference in the, in the blues there. So this isn't gonna be the final one. What I'm doing is I'm outlining where the, the blue gray splotches are supposed to go. I'm using this reference and I'm also using, I've got my computer monitor on the other, other side. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, and I'm starting to put in the dark ghost gray, the three, five, 36320. I'm starting to fill in the bits here as you can see and also I've done this wing. Damn it, two th big things too long. So I've almost done that wing so you can see how nice and splotchy and dirty it is uh, and the stabilizer, the stabilizer thing as well so it's quite still gonna be quite a dirty bird but not as dirty as other ones. So I'm gonna fill in those bits as a little bit of the light ghost gray I've got to do underneath to the sides here and also the bottom of the uh, the tail fins. Then I think I'm gonna go over it with a dark gray filter. I think that's the way to do it, just to, to let that blue set in there for a bit. And then I don't wanna make it to pop so much. And then to just to make it darker overall, I'll just spray over a dark filter, dark gray filter. Hopefully that'll work. So um, yeah, let's just keep going. There's so much, so much to paint here. I thought, oh, this will be done in a couple of days. No, 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 no. Um, well, maybe you can see the, the blue there. So you can see a little bit of the blue that I've done on that one. Uh, yeah, hmm. Let's keep going. As you can see, I've dulled down the blue somewhat. Uh, and what I did first, I used a filter of XF66 uh, light grey, which is actually not really a light or a grey. It's got a bit of blue in it itself. And then I figured, well, no, I actually need neutral grey, which is actually more of a dark grey. Uh, so I did that, apply that as a filter over those blue bits and uh, we've still got definitely got a blue tinge to that. Uh, and so I've done that, I've added the touch-ups to the tails and so forth, so we're looking really, really dirty now. And because of this, I've decided to go in two directions with the, um, with the 132 and the 148. So the 148, I'm not using the blue blend at all. I'm going to use neutral grey as my, what's it supposed to be called? Du, 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 du. Oh, I can't remember the name of it. The 35237 FS, whatever, the darkest one. And I might apply blue filter over the top of that using oils and so forth. But as you can see, I've, I've applied all the, um, the darkest areas where they have to be, including the tails. I've, I haven't finished painting the tails. The next step I've got to do is to paint, and that's what I've, I'm up to here with the Revell, is I need to paint, finish painting the dark ghost gray. And that's, uh, the wings are done. Uh, on the Revell, what else do I need to do? Yeah, wings are done. I'm just looking at my notes off screen. I've started the um, the tails. So the tails have very distinctive uh, wear patterns on them, uh, both inside and outside. So you can see those big touch-ups I've got there. Okay, and I've got to do a few little bits in here that I've missed. And then we get to the real fun bit, which is <laughs> doing the light gull gray, this dorsal um, piece here, and doing the wing bags, doing the walkways, and a few other things and then the whole top is done and I'll probably give it a gloss coat, lock it in, we'll flip her over and we'll do her bottom as it were. So let's get stuck into this.
And with that, the top side is done. Let me just put the airbrush away and I'll give you a quick squeeze. Oh, there goes the airbrush. Ah. It's alright Penny, everything's fine. <laughs> okay, so, there we are. That's those little vents, whatever they are on top screen. I'll just paint some burnt iron there. I might dry brush some metal effects on that because maybe a bit too coppery. Not too much steel. But here I've done the wing bags. Um, no, it's not the mother-in-law. It's the... Um, <laughs> so it's deck tan with a bit of buff and then I added some grey in there to get that sort of dirty effects. That's just the beginning. There has to be a lot done on those wing bags. Uh, the the mother-in-laws need to be mi mixed up a bit more. Uh, the walkways are done. There's a little bit of um, overspray on those. What I did with that is overspray. It's not actually overspray. It's sponge. So I used a sponge technique. Stole this from Sean at Prime Model Works. Thanks, Sean. Uh, just dipped the sponge into this pure Tamiya deck tan and eh, 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 eh. that's a that's it that's the word you got to use the sound effects and you just damp it on and you're getting this really nice rough sort of um, hopefully you can see the how rough it is on purpose and I scratched away a little bit too much there so I need to do a couple of touch ups which is the name of the game in the end there's a bit of overspray on the edges here um, I was a bit more careful on the Tammy cat the little the little fella here she is. Okay, same process on the wing bags, same process on the walkways. Uh, there's a little bit of, but I like it. I like how it looks a bit rough and sort of not perfect. And I've just sprayed the thing. So you can see the color difference there between these two. Let's get them on camera. Maybe I should zoom out, but I don't have a free hand here. See the color difference? One's a bit more gray, one's a bit more blue. Blue, gray, gray, blue. Okay, so the top side's done. Time to do the inevitable and Flip her over and play with her undersides um, whilst not touching the hole. Oh my god, this video's got lots of innuendo. Maybe I should stop it there and uh, we'll come back to it another day. Uh, I've also, I need to get these stands done. I'm running out of time, I've got to hurry up. All right, so let's zoom out of here. 